From the land of not-so-frozen lakes, this is 10,000 Takes. Brought to you by Minnesota Score Radio, Wally and Eric back for yet another week as we slice and dice the always busy, always topical, super-saturated Minnesota sports scene. And Wally, we're making that pivot from February into March. You've got hoops going on. You've got pucks. You've got baseball. You've got soccer. But we're going to lead off with the NFL, of course. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I know you're pumped. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and all the discussion with the Vikings, of course, over the last, well, since the season ended or maybe since the season began back in September was, was this going to be a year where they try to get Kirk Cousins back under contract? Are they going to be able to sign Justin Jefferson long-term? Are they going to be able to keep Daniil Hunter? So all these things are out there. It's all up in the air. You've got a draft coming up and all that swirling about. And then, of course, now this week, my favorite time of the year, the NFL Olympics. Yeah. The combine. The combine <laughs> where it's all about how much you can bench press, oh. how you look running around cones, your 40-yard dash time, your vertical jump. I don't know if anybody catches a football there or throws a football. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It's paralysis by analysis. But basically, Indianapolis is the center of the NFL universe for the next few days. And uh, first and foremost, and I don't care if you're talking about Quezzy or KOC or anybody else in the NFL, uh, when their lips are moving, they're probably lying. So whatever they're saying, oh, it's yeah, just a exactly. bunch of smoke signals. But Quezzy did say... Uh, early this week that he hasn't thought about trading Justin oh, Jefferson. Bull. Yeah. Well, no bull. That's who's <laughs> yeah, sponsoring yeah. the combine, right? You yeah, see that? No bull. yeah. But I, I would say this, of course you have to think about it. You have to lay all your cards on the table. Now, Minnesota, along with the other 31 teams gets a cap bump. They're up to $255 million now NFL salary cap. I think that's about a $30 million jump. Yes. So, that should be good news for the Vikings, but can they still afford Captain Kirk and Jay Jets? That's a lot of money. And Daniil Hunter. Let's and not Daniel, forget yeah. that piece. Who might be the most important piece. You, you think about it. The defense, as bad as it was a season ago than this past season, they were pretty good until like the last four or five games. And Daniil Hunter was the linchpin in that defense because they still struggled in the secondary a bit. I think that that's fair to say. But uh, bringing back Daniil Hunter, I mean, what he led the NFC in sacks, didn't he? I think he was number one in the he, NFC in sacks. He's a top-tier player. I mean, he's as good on his side of the ball as Cousins or Jefferson is on their side enough. of the ball. Yeah. And I'll just play fantasy football GM here. What if you, what if you did pedal Jay Jets and got a boatload of picks and players in return and you didn't re-sign Kirk Cousins and say you spent the money to bring Chris Jones in? Right. Make your defense that much better, the Kansas City Chiefs defensive end, and then you get a you know a Joe Flacco, you draft a young quarterback, develop. Would you be any worse off than where they have been? I don't know. I don't know. You had any money to spend on any other players though. <laughs> now you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> if you're bringing all three back and adding Chris Jones, well, oh, I'm boy. saying no. You're not. You keep Daniel, but you make the move with. You don't re-sign Kirk and you let J.J. Oh, you let go. the others You go. get the haul for Justin Jefferson. Oh, I'm just I see. Total speculation. I but, see what you're saying. Um, oh, yeah, I missed that. Sorry, I wasn't yeah, listening. You were, your earplugs. <laughs> Take them out. <laughs> the other thing is, our, okay, so who are they looking at in the combine? Obviously, everybody's eyeballing all the prospects there, but are right. they going to specifically drill down on a quarterback or two, a Michael Penix, a J.J. McCarthy, somebody who realistically could end up – being available when they have that pick in round one at what number eleven? Number eleven. And and what about the running back position? Let's not forget that that didn't exactly <laughs> wasn't exactly a position no, of no. strength this past season. Well, so uh, I'm sure that they're going to have to look at some of that as well. I love that question. You know me. I'm old school. I don't really like the way today's NFL is, where they've gotten away from the superstar stud right. running back. Saquon Barkley. I'm not sure he's going to stay with the New York Giants. I'd love to have a Saquon Barkley. Yeah. On well, he's a team. free agent. There you go. Yeah. It's Stein Saquon Barkley. Get a better old line and win with the power game. What's yeah. wrong with that? Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. All right. Um, let's talk some Timberwolves. Right. We've got a couple of minutes here. They still on top of the West. Um, you know, they're in the midst of a long homestand, yeah. which is important. 
because that only means one thing. that They've got a lot of road games coming up too. So um, is there anything that you see that's going to need fixing as they go down the stretch here? I mean, certainly they're going to have to avoid those losses to those bottom welling teams. That's got to happen. Uh, they got to stay healthy for sure. I mean, that's the other piece to this. And so far, they have been healthy. I mean, I've been amazed, knock on wood, how healthy they have been this year. Yeah, I think stay consistent, stay hungry. You haven't really done anything yet. Yes, they've been very good. They're a, so far, they're a tremendous story, but they still haven't accomplished what you really want to do, and that's right. go on a deep playoff run. I think when they saw Milwaukee the other night, you know, that, that border battle, that was, that was top-tier basketball. But that's what it's going to look like when you get into the postseason. You're going to see teams like Milwaukee that know how to win. I think it's about continued growth for Cat and Ant. You know, try to just play ball, not worry about what the Zebras are going to say. Mm. Because what I saw when I went to the Bucks timberwolves game is, you know, and Giannis is still to me a notch above Cat and Ant. You know, he's an MVP. Right. He's won a championship. But he gets every call because he's he a does. super duper star. Ant and Cat still need to get to that level. So the less you complain to the refs, the better chances you have of getting calls moving forward. Yeah, and they still complain, and they don't get the same calls. No, they I, know, don't. I know Chris Finch was upset about it. I know that Pat Bev was upset that Chris Finch didn't <laughs> shake his hand after the game. Pat Bev, stir it up. <laughs> Pat Bev, man. <laughs> He can go pound. Well, sand. you loved him when he was here, though. Yeah, but he's not here anymore. He's, he's like A.J. Pierzynski. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to grate on folks. Yes, he And does. now he's a cheesehead. Really? With the Bucks. Oh. <laughs> not A.J. Oh, that's he's it. a okay. broadcast. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to talk some baseball. Come yeah, on. stick around. The winningest coach in the history of the Big Ten will join us here on 10K <laughs> Takes. Your Pat Bev ticket. <laughs> True love stories never have endings. However, they do have beginnings. Congratulations on your engagement. Begin planning your special wedding day at WeddingsOfLakeville.com, where you'll discover over a dozen reception venues accommodating up to 600 guests. Go to WeddingsOfLakeville.com and choose settings that are intimate, serene, outdoors, historical, state-of-the-art, traditional, and even country club style. Feel confident. WeddingsOfLakeville.com provides recommendations from businesses we know and trust. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. <laughs> Maya? Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. 10,000 takes rolling along. We're going to talk some baseball, gopher baseball to be specific. A guy that has been around 43 years coaching the University of Minnesota, and uh, this will be his final season. Joining us now, the great John Anderson, number 14. Uh, John, uh, why now? I mean, it could have been five years ago. It could have been last year. It could have been next year. Why now uh, did you make the decision to uh, walk away after this season? Well, there's a number of things that go into that, I believe. You know, um, it's not a decision you wake up one day and say, I'm going to retire. I, you know, I've been paying attention to uh, my energy level and passion, and I, didn't want, I didn't, don't want to stay too long, never wanted to stay too long. I've seen people do that. In our profession, it never ends very well. Um, we went through a really challenging time during the pandemic and, and uh, all the things that went with that and lots of games and practices and played a, you know, Big Ten schedule only in 20, what was that, 2021. Right. And uh, so, um, you know, and I think uh, through it all, I think we've had a couple good recruiting classes. I think our Roster is is, uh, is is in a better place right now, and uh, I just feel like uh, based on where the program's at, the roster's at, I'll be 69 next May, and this fall would have been my 50th year on campus, and uh, since I arrived at the University of Minnesota in the fall of 74, and there's never a good time because my decision impacts others, whether it's players, coaches, you know, there's never a perfect time for everybody, but... Uh, just in discussion with my wife and daughter, I think it's it's time. I'd like I don't want to 
you know, die with my cleats on here coaching and uh, there's other things we want to do and and uh, in our lives and hopefully we can spend some of the years ahead of us here uh, doing some of those things john i know you're passionate about college baseball in the north you're the winningest coach in big 10 history what do you think? Is it good for the conference from a baseball perspective to bring in USC, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon? How does that change things? Well, Mike, it makes the league a heck of a lot more competitive. That's for sure. Not that it's not competitive right now uh, with the investment that has been made in this league in the last 10 years. Um, you're bringing in four schools that have strong uh, histories and traditions in the game. They have better weather than anybody in our league. Um, and uh, UCLA had the number one recruiting class in baseball this last year. And, and now you've created a footprint from coast to coast to play college baseball and, and, uh, and brought in people that have, have, in my opinion, have advantages, both in terms of weather and access to talent pool. And I don't think necessarily it's a good uh, match for baseball necessarily. Uh, you know, it, as the league's expanded even into Maryland and Rutgers, Maryland and Rutgers probably have the best weather in the league currently. You know, Indiana probably falls in there next, but now you're bringing four schools that are going to have better weather than the rest of us in the league. And like I said, strong programs, big commitment, uh, lots of talent in their areas. Um, I think it's going to make the league uh, a lot more challenging. The travel is going to be challenging, and I'm not sure it's going to be good for a large part of the league, but uh, it's who we are. It's a, it's a decision based on football and basketball primarily and more television sets for the Big Ten Network. And I, I think we've gotten farther and farther away from where I started in my career when it was more regionally based programs and you played within your region more to a national program. And, uh, you know, when you're starting your season in the middle of February, like we do, middle of winter, and you're playing against people that have a huge weather advantage, can play more home games. And because of no U.S. Bank Stadium this year, we're playing 18 home games out of a 50 game schedule. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I. I don't think it's from from my perspective in terms of looking at the league as a whole. I think it, uh, you know, I think the advantage is going to shift to the West Coast uh, as we go forward to the two coasts. In my opinion, you still have Michigan and Ohio State that have obviously resources and and, and commitments there as well. But um, it's a weather driven sport, and the weather's a big impact. And I think those people will gain an advantage as the league goes along. You mentioned, um, you know, the advantage in the number of home games or the lack of home games. Uh, this year, you're going right now, in this weekend, on a 22-game road trip, which is just unheard of, um, without U.S. Bank Stadium. How were, you, how were you notified that you weren't going to have U.S. Bank Stadium, and how did that impact the way you're doing things this year? Well, first of all, um, we're seven straight weeks on the road, so that's where the 22 games falls into. Um, you know, I think there's some things that go into it. I first heard about it last March when we were playing down there. Billy Soul, who's the president of our dugout club, ran into somebody at U.S. Bank Stadium. They said, oh, by the way, I'm not sure there's going to be baseball in here next year. And I said, whoa, we have a whole schedule uh, set up. We have people coming in here. We have dates that were given to us. So that was the first I heard of it, and uh, then we started to – have some conversations along the way and got to the point where they finally made a decision. There would be no baseball to replace the turf in there. And so then, you know, I, we, we went back and forth until the end of May this past year. And then I decided I can't wait any longer because I have to find teams to play in a schedule that, for this 24 season. And the people coming into us bank stadium, I couldn't call them up in September and say, Hey, by the way, guys, we can't play in us bank stadium. Everybody's got to find somebody to play. So, I just felt I had to be fair to everybody and I had to get busy to find a schedule for our own team. And um, uh, that's uh, what we did at uh, towards the end of May last year to try to put this together. And and uh, so it's uh, we're fortunate we found people to play, but it's a challenge. We're going coast to coast. We've already been to Arizona and Florida and going to California and Spokane and back and forth. And we're going to Elon, North Carolina, then back out to San Francisco. Oh so it's uh, every time zone back and forth. And, the other thing people don't realize, number one, is the change in time zones, the sleep patterns get interrupted. You play on Sundays, so you don't get back to campus till one or two o'clock in the morning. And um, and you lose a practice day every week because you travel on Thursdays. And so the player development cycle gets turned upside down. And past years at the U.S. Bank Stadium, this would be a time we'd play 
15 to 18 home games in February, March, and we get our whole roster here. We get to play midweek games. You get to develop your team at a time of the year when it's really critical. And and now you lose midweek games, you lose player development time, practice time. So it does uh, affect the uh, development of your team, especially as you try to get ready for the Big Ten season. John, you and I have had conversations in the past about pushing back the College World Series. That's early June, Omaha, to maybe July to, to level the playing field, you know, equalize things for schools in the North. Because as you said, weather's a, a huge factor in college baseball. Can, can that ever happen? Will the Sun Belt schools ever, you know, acquiesce, so to speak? Well, I think we're in an interesting time, obviously, in college athletics, right? It's been turned upside down. And what's going to happen going forward? Is there going to be, you know, is there going to be uh, where football and basketball players are going to be employees and the resources it's going to take to, to, to make these people players and have employment contracts and the cost for that? What's going to happen to college athletics? What's going to happen to the funding model? How long are we going to be able to go? Not, you know, because we can't play at U.S. Bank Stadium, our travel budget went up a quarter of a million dollars to try to make this happen. And so I think if you want to preserve our game from a national perspective and you want to be able to have more teams that have a chance to be competitive and maybe have a chance to, to, to get to the College World Series or even the NCAA tournament, I think you're going to have to take a look at trying to move the season forward and giving more people an opportunity to have access to the NCAA championship. I don't think the current model is sustainable in the current climate of college athletics right now from a financial perspective. So something's going to have to give. And um, and whether college baseball becomes what college football looks like it's going to, where there's going to be X number of teams that are going to get together and they're going to play at a certain level, right, and have a certain level of funding, and they're going to play at a certain time of the year, and the rest of you guys can go figure out what you want to do in a, in, in a, in a different uh, time of the year in a different uh, league and in, in, in a different le- uh, level of NCAA baseball. But I don't think it's sustainable. This is my opinion. I don't think Big Ten baseball two or three years from now is going to be played coast to coast. I don't. I think eventually it's going to be too expensive. The student athlete welfare piece is going to come into play. And people are going to say, why are we flying coast to coast? when we got all these schools in our regional footprint that we could be playing. Um, and we could create a league like the old WCHA where you could have some Big Ten teams with some regional Division One schools that play college baseball in a league in, 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 in your footprint, which would minimize travel, save expenses, and I think allow you to play and compete with people that have similar challenges to what you have, and then see who the best team is in your region and go on from there at the end of the year as far as postseason goes. So I think there's – a lot coming down the pike here in the next two or three years, and it's going to be interesting to see where this all settles. I think college baseball and Big Ten baseball is going to be uh, affected by some of those decisions going forward. Well, John, uh, looks like a rocky road for college baseball, but uh, hopefully turns out the best for you in your final year. Enjoy this final season. I know uh, I know you're relishing each moment as the, this thing uh, wraps up for you. Appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank you, Wally. Eric, great to see you. Thanks for having me on, and uh, all the best to you guys. Thanks, John. Congrats on a great run. Yeah, Thank you. I appreciate it. He is John Anderson, longtime head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gopher baseball program, retiring at the end of this season. Eric and I will be back right after this time. Stay with us. Finding the ideal place to stay is important for business travelers. Lakeville, Minnesota is conveniently located off I-35, just south of the Twin Cities with a variety of hotel choices. Lakeville offers convenient amenities such as shopping, walking trails, golf, and more. Our unique meeting spaces, historic downtown, live music, and over 60 dining options are sure to impress. Book your next stay in Lakeville and experience convenience, comfort, and quality. Find your perfect hotel at visitlakeville.org. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. (laughs) Maya? Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Welcome back. 10,000 takes. Uh, As we move into March, that becomes March Madness. 
And I know your Gopher men's basketball team has hopes or had hopes of getting into that, but a uh, a really uh, a loss at Nebraska kind of squelched that a little bit. But just the same, Big Ten tournament's coming up. You've got that at home, so to speak, at Target Center in Minneapolis. I mean, they could, I think if they win and get maybe to the, gosh, if they can get to the semifinals on Saturday, I think it gives them a shot. I do. I also think before they get to that tournament, they need to win home games against Penn State and Indiana. For sure. You have to win those games. For sure. The Illinois game on the road, I mean, eh, that's like climbing Mount Whitney. That'll be a challenge. And then you finish at Northwestern, but Northwestern's in the same spot Minnesota is. They've got to get two or three more regular season wins. And then I agree with you, have a showing in the Big Ten tournament. Get yourself playing at least on Saturday. Get your fan base, uh, you know, pumped up. But that 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 should be hopefully enough to get him into uh, the tournament, not the NIT, but the actual NCAA tournament. And it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to go to the NIT if they don't make it into the NCAA. As a matter of fact, they should be in the NIT unless they just bottom out here. And I don't see that. I mean, we've seen that the last couple of seasons where. You know, they have a chance to do something, but they don't, and they just kind of bottom out at the end of the year. I don't see that this year. I think there's way too much talent here for that to happen. Yeah, and I think Nebraska brought them back to earth. They did. I'm sure Ben Johnson and, and, and the staff have said, okay, we, we were humbled down there in Lincoln. They didn't really compete. And they had the blown lead at Iowa, 20 points. They, that's the, right. the woulda, coulda, shoulda game in my eyes for, for sure. the Gopher basketball program. But, you know, keep pushing ahead. You know, stack up some more wins. Uh, I think they've garnered a lot of respect around the Big Ten. I know Matt Painter, the Purdue head coach, when Minnesota almost knocked off Purdue in West Lafayette, Indiana, he was saying, look, they're on the right track. They're doing a lot of good things. So I'm happy with their progress, but they can't let up. Like the Timberwolves, they haven't done anything yet. Yeah, very true. Um, Okay, Uh, if you're tired of basketball, or hockey, or preseason baseball, or the combine. (laughs) Lo and behold, we got soccer. (laughs) Min U is underway already. They already got a win under their new head coach. Uh, They're going to play their first home game this weekend. Temperatures should be good. It's all good. Soccer is back. Yeah, they got a win at Austin down in Texas to start the season last week. They'll take on the reigning MLS champs, the Columbus Crew, your team, at <laughs> Allianz. Team. Well, you're Ohio. You should claim them. They're a champion. A lot more than the Guardians and Browns can say. Don't or say Or even that. the Buckeyes. The Cavs have a championship. That's just the only one. Well, <laughs> it's more than any Minnesota team's had since 1991. I know that. Okay. But uh, I want to see what this young coach, Eric Ramsey, he's 32 Comes from Man U, that would be Manchester United in the English Premier League. That, that's one of the most valuable franchises on the globe to Man U, Minnesota United. Oh boy. He's highly thought of. I guess he's very innovative and creative. But, you know, the only red flag I can see is why would you leave the EPL for MLS? <laughs> that's a big drop off. Yeah, I don't quite understand that. But Or is this a stepping stone? Well... Possibly, you know. Does he jump back over to Europe now, then? If he has success. I would assume that the money over there is uh, as good or better than the MLS. Oh, my goodness, yes. We know the quality of play is. It is. Yeah, I I talked to got some European kids that I talked to that I coach in basketball, and they, I send, I mentioned the MLS, and they kind of go, eh, <laughs> they know better. <laughs> when the Minnesota Vikings played the Pittsburgh Steelers in London in 2013, yes. I know you went over there. I did. I was in the U.K. too. I went to a Chelsea-Tottenham soccer match and left after the game was over and walked through the players' parking lot. Oh, my goodness. The rides these guys have, the Lamborghinis, the Porsches, the Rolls Royces. <laughs> they're getting paid. Oh, yeah, they're <laughs> getting paid. A lot of Euro dollars or whatever they call it over there. All right. We'll see how much you have in your pocket as we do takes of the day. That's coming up next. This is 10,000 takes. Stay with us. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. Maya? Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? 
It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. True love stories never have endings. However, they do have beginnings. Congratulations on your engagement. Begin planning your special wedding day at WeddingsOfLakeville.com, where you'll discover over a dozen reception venues accommodating up to 600 guests. Go to WeddingsOfLakeville.com and choose settings that are intimate, serene, outdoors, historical, state-of-the-art, traditional, and even country club style. Feel confident. WeddingsOfLakeville.com provides recommendations from businesses we know and trust. 10K Takes on television. We're wrapping up yet another episode, but before we say bye-bye, we're <laughs> going to find out what kind of mood mood you're in. Angry American, grumpy guardian, or dare I say it, happy camper. Well, I've been grinding my teeth uh, ever uh -oh. since we <laughs> talked to John Anderson a little bit earlier in the show. <laughs> talking calcium about calcium dust next yes. week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> That's what that is. Uh, anyway, uh, the U.S. Bank Stadium issue and the Golden Gopher Baseball Program. Okay, so we spend a half billion dollars of taxpayer money to get that thing built. Okay, great. We keep the Vikings in town. You got your Taylor Swift concert. You got your tractor pulls, whatever else. You had the Final Four in there. Heck, we even had a Super Bowl. I get it. Uh, but going forward, do we know if the University of Minnesota baseball program is going to be able to play games in there like they have been for the last several years, like they did at the Metrodome for multiple seasons, you know, that's a big deal, especially for the small college programs around here as well, and high school baseball programs, a lot of which, as you heard Coach Anderson say, can't afford it anymore because yeah. the price of poker has gone up. U.S. Bank Stadium wants big bucks to go play games with it. Don't think that the Gophers are going over there and playing for free because they are not. So U.S. Bank Stadium is still making money despite the fact that they're not able to sell it out for other items. Well, believe me, they are going to start selling that to other events and they're going to look for more concerts and that type of thing. That's why they want to kick the Gophers out. That's why they want to kick baseball out. I say this is an absolute travesty going on over at U.S. Bank Stadium, and I am just incensed by the whole thing, to be honest with you. Well, let's see what that yeah. mood meter says. Just what I suspected. Yeah. You're in the red zone. Imagine You're that. a grumpy guardian. You're not happy about the rich people stadium. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not the people stadium. It's no, the rich people stadium. It's not stadium. even close, and it never really has been. No, it's ridiculous. All right, well, I'm going to try to be a little more uplifting. You know, I, I think sometimes we forget yeah. how spoiled we are here in the sports-saturated Twin Cities. I've called it the sports capital of the upper Midwest. Let, let's look at the last eight or nine days, going back to Friday, what we've had at our fingertips. I was at the border battle, Milwaukee and Minnesota. Star power everywhere. Giannis, uh, Damon Lillard, Ant, Cat, Stephen A. Smith sitting courtside next to your favorite owner, Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod. <laughs> And then you had going on last weekend, girls prep hockey. It's made quantum leaps. It's, it's a great event over at the X. I know they had a lot of fans there. And then you look at the Tuesday night, Minnesota Wild come back to the X. Kirill the Thrill back on the ice. How about Wednesday night? Decision time if you're a fan. Do you go see Victor Wembanyama, the, the Eiffel Tower for San Antonio against the top seed Minnesota Timberwolves? Or do you go to the barn and see Caitlin Clark for Iowa against Minnesota? Same night. And then, of course, coming up on the weekend, your Columbus crew, My MLS Columbus Cup champs, crew. taking on Minnesota United in uh, St. Paul at Allianz Field. I, and this is just a typical random week in the Twin Cities. So we're incredibly lucky here, and I think sometimes we forget about it. And you and I know firsthand, yeah. because we can't go to all these games. I, I get dizzy trying to keep up with it all. I agree. All right. Uh, let's FedEx out those thank yous. One to David Weld, John Anderson, Paul Langfellow, and Rocky for Wally. I'm Eric saying so long. This is 10K Takes, your sports ticket. <laughs>